Hello everyone, welcome to DevOps Info channel. In the previous videos, we had a look at uh, how to get started with the Azure Automation accounts. And we also saw a few examples of uh, how effectively we could manage the updates from the Azure Automation accounts. Uh, and uh, we also had some examples of uh, hybrid worker groups and the design uh, state configuration. Right now we are in front of the Microsoft Azure portal. Uh, you could see there are a lot of things which we can make. Uh, uh, utilize uh, the automation accounts. On the left side, we see the configuration management. Uh, we didn't talk about the inventory and the change tracking uh, in, in our videos, but uh, this is straightforward. Like what you, what you can do is like in the inventory, uh, you, you could add your Azure VMs uh, and also a non-Azure mission. Uh, for example, if you have the hybrid worker group configured in your uh, data center, uh, you would be able to add your uh, VMs or a physical mission which is starting in your data center and uh, that adding uh, of uh, the host into the uh, inventory is going to benefit you by listing down the machines, operating system, uh, version, platform, and also you can see the software, files, Windows registry, Windows services, even for Linux, we have the Linux demos, uh, all these things. Uh, there is something called change tracking. With the change tracking, you'll be able to uh, track a particular uh, file or a Windows registry, for example, if you have a host file uh, configured uh, by chance, like uh, if you want uh, if you want to monitor, the, like nobody modifies that host file or the particular uh, uh, VM or a physical uh, machine, then you'd be able to uh, see that uh, from the change tracking over here. Uh, that is the applicable even for the Windows registry. If someone is doing a Windows registry, uh, that you specifically don't want to change. Uh, you could do that uh, by uh, by uh, by tracking them from the change tracking. So this inventory and change tracking is straightforward. You can simply go ahead and uh, uh, onboard your Azure VMs, and then uh, later you'll be able to uh, do the Windows registry uh, uh, tracking and also the files. Even for example, you'll be able to check the Windows services as well, which is good. Uh, and uh, with the update management, we also had a look at uh, how to perform that. Uh, the next part, which we're going to talk about today is the process automation. Uh, in the process automation, uh, like you'd be able to uh, automate the frequent type consuming tasks, uh, which would uh, help you in uh, reducing the recurring tasks for the admins. Uh, and by doing this, uh, you are effectively improving the operations. So, in this uh, run books, like what you can do is, uh, you would be able to uh, create uh, the, the process automation with the help of uh, PowerShell and Python run books. Uh, if you want to take some example, take a look at some of the examples. We also had uh, one example in the previous videos, like how we were successfully able to create an AD user in a domain controller, which is running in the Azure. Uh, so like we just uh, triggered this run book and we saw uh, like uh, the user created in the domain controller. So these kind of process automations uh, can be uh, utilized uh, from the runbook. So when you go into the browse gallery, you have uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, contributions uh, coming from the community. You can uh, start exploring. Uh, you see, for example, you also have uh, stop, start Azure uh, VM in a, a scheduled uh, shutdown. So all these examples you can uh, start from, uh, from here. Uh, so uh, today uh, we are going to uh, look at one of the example uh, because Starting a runbook in automation, uh, there are multiple ways to do that. And then the first thing is like you can simply go in the Azure portal, uh, click on a, a particular uh, runbook, and you can click on start. Uh, or uh, you can also go ahead and uh, trigger this from the Windows PowerShell uh, or uh, Azure Automation API and also webhooks. Like for example, you can start a runbook from a HTTP web request where it will have the, the content. Uh, the request will be sent to the Azure Automation uh, account and then you will be getting the response. Uh, so this is completely uh, authenticated with a security token uh, in the webhook. Uh, we'll be taking a look at that in a few minutes. Uh, and also the there is also one option like where you'll be able to create uh, this runbook based on uh, Azure Alert, which is really good, right? Like for example, if you're getting an Azure Alert, we'll be able to uh, create a runbook and then uh, uh, response to that particular Azure alert. Uh, so these kind of things. And lastly, we, we also have uh, a schedule uh, which you can uh, create uh, jobs and uh, target that for that particular runbook. Uh, so today we are going to uh, take a look at uh, how to start a, a runbook uh, from the uh, from the webhook. So 
here uh, i wanted to show you how it is uh, configured like uh, how it is working in reality so if you if you take a look at it i have expanded uh, the video i'm not uh, I, I have expanded the image i'm not sure if that is clear uh, and also i will paste the link so that you can uh, take a look at this uh, the article uh, which is really good so in the illustration we could see this is the run book we have created in the azure automation there are multiple ways to trigger it uh, over the left you have uh, azure portal which is easier way uh, the webhooks uh, which you are sending a http request uh, and then you'll be getting the response back uh, and then you have the powershell and you also can respond the azure alerts and also lastly we have the uh, schedule uh, you see here like there is a option to send the job to on-premise runbook worker uh, and then that job can also be triggered to uh, any on-premise uh, activity uh, so this is uh, the overall uh, a view of how the azure uh, uh, runbook can be utilized but let's take a look at how to uh, how to uh, see the example so i have just showing you this uh, article uh, i will also post this article in the video but you can try this uh, like you are just simply going to start a run book from a webhook http request so here uh, if you scroll down uh, what you need to do is like uh, simply first you need to create a run book with one of the example which they have given uh, here like uh, this is one of the powershell run book which would uh, create a hello world uh, output so here uh, in the aut automate you are just going to go into the automation accounts uh, and then uh, create a run book and in the run book i have just simply copied uh, the powershell uh, version runtime version 5.1 and then i have added that uh, particular script over here so that's what i have done uh, if you want to take a look at it just simply edit i, I can show uh, what it is uh, it is it's the same what i have uh, what we see it on the uh, uh, on the on the microsoft article be sure to uh, save and publish this if you do not publish this then you are not able to uh, add a webhook uh, for this particular uh, run book so the moment after you uh, publish this like you'll be seeing the status as published so what you need to do is just simply click on it and then you're you're, you're just going to click on add a webhook the moment when you click on add a webhook uh, it is going to give you a a, a a unique url through the unique url that is uh, that url will have the token and through that unique url you are going to initiate the web request from your uh, from your client, uh, we are you are going to send the the, the HTTP request uh, from from your side. So, uh, like for example, in my case, I have already added the web hooks. Like uh, if you see here, this is uh, I created one for the hybrid and, and one for uh, testing it on the uh, uh, Azure uh, uh, virtual machines. So, like for example, when you click on this, you are going to see uh, uh, it is enabled, and you can also set the expiration time, which is really good. We have also you also have an option to delete which is good and there is something for the parameters so in the parameters like uh, uh, you need to uh, send the the, the optional uh, uh, webhook data uh, like uh, that depends on how the parameter you're sending uh, if you want to send an empty string then you have to type empty string here and uh, here is an option to run on azure or to run on hybrid worker in my example i'm going to uh, run from a hybrid worker and this particular uh, a laptop from where we are doing it this is uh, on one of the hybrid worker group which is worker on prem so that's the reason i have just selected a hybrid worker and uh, selected the hybrid uh, 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 selected this laptop for testing so the moment when you click on ok uh, yeah uh, this you have to copy the, the 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 unique url which would also have the token uh, the and then uh, what you need to do is over here uh, just uh, you have to uh, use uh, these uh, json files stored locally somewhere in your uh, laptop and then uh, you are just simply going to call that file so first you need to simply uh, create uh, this json file and store it somewhere in a location in my case i have stored it simply uh, in the temp folder and then uh, you are just going to uh, create uh, this uh, uh, first you have to create the powershell and then you have to save it locally and then you have to create the json file you have to save it locally in the laptop and then it, this is just only for the example and then uh, you again create this uh, powershell uh, with a variable file uh, which is uh, names.json you have to mention the part where your json file resides and uh, post that uh, you are just simply going to run the powershell command 
So uh, I'm just going to show you an example of how it is looking like. So uh, I have already, in my case, I have already done uh, the, uh, the, the, the example. So uh, we don't need to uh, uh, worry about it. So uh, I am just going to show how it is going to look like in reality. So the moment when you when you run this, uh, I have completely run it. Uh, I will show you only the run selection. Okay. So here, if you see the moment when I run it, it is giving me a response status code two zero two, which means like it is accepted. Uh, so if you if you go here. Uh, and then uh, there, there are uh, the status codes, which is also given uh, in this particular article. Yeah, I think so it was given. Uh, yeah, so if you see uh, the request, we sent it to the Azure Automation account and uh, which is 202 is the, 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 the request is accepted and the runbook was successfully queued. So if you see here, uh, this is the the runbook which we created, and I'm going to go into the test, and here in the webhooks, we are going to look into uh, the hybrid. Oh, not here. So here we are going to look into the jobs. So in the jobs. You see, uh, I just uh, triggered one and it is showing completed. So in the completed, when you open it, uh, it is going to show us the webhook data. Uh, and also I forgot to show you one more thing, like here, the moment when you run the command, it is going to give you the status quo. You see the status description accepted. And also it says the content type, uh, uh, the raw content, uh, like it is showing the content length. It is showing the content type which is json uh, and also uh, it is showing the microsoft uh, http api uh, which is uh, good uh, and it, it is showing the raw content length which is uh, 51 uh, so here the same thing you are going to see and the output when you click on the output you see just simply it is saying the end hello world so this is the the, the simple way of how to get started with the uh, automation accounts and uh, using the the runbook and uh, with the runbook, uh, definitely you can, uh, uh, you know, automate lot of your, uh, uh, lot of your recurring tasks by just using a single HTTP request. Uh, this webhook will uh, enable any external service to launch a specific runbook in the Azure Automation. You can, for example, use the Azure DevOps services, uh, GitHub, Azure Monitor Logs. Uh, and all these uh, applications uh, are one of the examples of what are the external services because you can also trigger a runbook from the Azure DevOps. Uh, you can do that from the GitHub. Uh, we will take a look at how to utilize these uh, with the Azure DevOps services and GitHub in the upcoming videos. Uh, so, uh, this and also one important point which you need to make is uh, using a webhook to start a Python runbook is not supported at this point. So uh, you have to keep this in mind if you're going to utilize the Python for uh, uh, starting the runbook. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is one of the, the best option I would say uh, you can uh, get started with uh, utilizing the, the, the process automation by using the runbooks. In the upcoming videos, we will uh, take a look at uh, some of the real examples of how to really utilize the webhook uh, to uh, send a HTTP request and then uh, using the Azure DevOps services or a GitHub. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel for getting uh, more updates on the Azure uh, Cloud uh, and also the Microsoft Cloud security related information. Thank you.